Now that we have RStudio running and have taken a brief look at the object-oriented programming style that we use with R, let's get familiar with some more basic commands. For this video and the rest of the videos in this series, I'll be using the file Odom Institute Introduction to R, which is a script file that you can download on the Odom website. Let's start with the C command, which we can use to create a vector of numbers or letters or other elements. We'll find that we use this C command in a lot of different cases later on in the program. For example, in this line, I'm creating an object called my.vector, which is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, bound together in a vector. This highlights the basic idea behind pretty much every R command that we'll use. We start with the command name, then an open parentheses, then arguments inside the parentheses. In this case, the arguments are simply the elements that we want to put in this vector. I can run that line, then I can run the line that just has the name of the object to print it out. You can also create sequences of numbers in R. A really straightforward way to do this is simply to type the number that you want to start at, the number that you want to end at, and a colon in between. For example, in this object my.sequence, I create a sequence from 0 to 10. If you use this notation with the colon, it's automatically going to increase by 1 each time. Another option for creating sequences is the seq command. In this case, the arguments inside the parentheses are the first number or the starting number, the last number or the ending number, and then there's an argument called by, which is telling R what numbers to count by in creating this sequence. In this example, I'm again going from 0 to 10, but now I'm counting by 2. And as you can see here in the console window, the first object, my sequence, counts from 0 to 10 by 1s. The second object, my sequence 2, counts by 2s. Another useful command is the rep command, R-E-P. That stands for repetition. In this case, I'm going to combine the rep command with the C command that we already learned. Notice that my first argument to rep is the C command and the numbers 1, 2, 3. Then I've got another argument called times, which I set to 8. In this case, I'm telling R to repeat the vector 1, 2, 3, 8 times. And here in the printout we see 1, 2, 3 gets repeated 8 times. This is an example of combining two different commands in one. We've got one command, the C command, as an argument in another command, the rep command. We'll find as we go through this course that we use this strategy in many different cases. Another important skill to learn with R is how to reference particular elements inside of a vector. For example, let's say we wanted to display the fourth element in that object called my sequence. The way we do this is with the square bracket notation. We type the name of the object that we're interested in, in this, in this case my sequence, then square brackets. Inside the square brackets we put the number of the element that we want to refer to. So in this case number four. And as we see here in the console window it prints out the number 3. If we go back up to my sequence here, we see that the fourth element is indeed the number 3. We can also use the C command in the square bracket notation. In this case, let's say I want to refer to elements 4 and 6 in the object my sequence. I use the same square brackets that I did before, but now I put the C command inside those square brackets with the numbers 4 and 6 inside the C command.
This produces the number 3 and 5, which is the fourth element and the sixth element of the object my sequence. Now let's say we wanted to omit one or more elements from a vector. For example, in this case, let's say we don't want the third element of the vector my sequence. We could put all of the numbers except the third element inside the square brackets inside the C command like we saw here, or we could just simply write minus 3 inside the square brackets. This produces all of the elements in that vector except for the third element, which is the number 2. Notice that's missing here. Another command that's useful is the sample command. Sample draws a sample with or without replacement from a vector. For example, let's say we wanted to draw a sample from the object my sequence. In this case, I'm going to set the argument replace to true, meaning that each time an element is drawn from my sequence, it then gets put back into the sequence and could be drawn again. Another option is to say replace equals false, which means that each element in the vector that we're drawing from will only be drawn once. By default, when using the sample command, R draws the number of elements that are in the sequence. So for example, in this object my.sequence there are 11 elements and so when we use sample, there will be 11 elements drawn. But we could change this with the argument between the object we're sampling from and the replace argument. Say, for example, I wanted to draw only three values from my sequence. I put a three here and run the code. And if I print that code out, we see that it only drew three elements from that sequence. There are several additional arguments and features in the sample command. And so that makes a good example for using the help function in RStudio. If we go to the help menu and search for sample, we can find the R documentation on that command. This documentation shows the usage of the function, it shows the various arguments with an explanation for each one, and has several other details about the command. It also has references and, in many cases, examples of how to use the command. Next up, let's talk about matrices. One of the most important commands that you will use in R is the matrix command, which is the command that creates a new matrix. There are three essential arguments with the matrix command, although of course there are many more. The first argument is the information, or the data, that you want to put inside your new matrix. This can take a number of different forms, but in this case, I'm going to put a sequence from the numbers 1 to 9 in this new matrix. The next argument is n row, which stands for number of rows. I'm going to set that argument to 3. Then finally, n call stands for number of columns. I'll also set that to 3. Keep in mind that whatever you put inside the matrix in that first argument needs to match up with the number of rows and number of columns that you set in the later arguments. Here's what the matrix looks like. Counts from 1 to 9 going by columns. 1, 2, 3 in the first, 4, 5, 6 in the second, 7, 8, 9 in the third. If you want to fill in the data by row, you can simply type by row equals true as an additional argument inside the matrix command. This fills in the numbers by rows instead of columns. 
Another important feature with matrices in R is the square bracket notation that we saw earlier for vectors. If we wanted to refer to a specific element in a matrix, we can do so with the square brackets. But now we need to refer to a specific row and a specific column. So, for example, if I wanted to refer to the element in the second row, second column, I would type 2, comma, 2 in the square brackets. Or, if I wanted to refer to the second row and the third column, I would type 2, comma, 3. The first number is the row number you want, the second number is the column number. You can also refer to entire rows or entire columns of a matrix. For example, if I type 3, comma, and then a blank space, I'll refer to the entire third row of that particular matrix. Let's run that example. Here we have 7, 8, 9, which is the entire third row of the object my matrix. Another option, if we wanted the entire third column, would be to switch the location of the number 3. We have a blank space, then a comma, and then the number 3. This would produce the entire third column. This concludes the video on basic manipulation of objects focusing on vectors, sequences, and matrices. In the next video, we'll look at some basic functions and how to use them and create new functions in R.